What's up guys, it's Oni and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be talking about a range of cameras that you can use when starting film photography. We're going to range it from the most basic camera to pretty much a what would be considered a professional level camera. Now I don't have a medium format camera in my possession, I don't shoot medium format, but I will get one and I'll probably revise this video at some point. And right now I just kind of want to show you the range of pictures that I've taken in film photography because I think a lot of people allow the fact that film photography doesn't have that much forgiveness as far as learning curves go as an excuse to scare them away from trying. I got to speak to a lot of people during Film Stock 2023, which is towards the tail end of 2023 last year, and a lot of people who were shooting digital were really afraid or really just wasn't sure um, the curve or the buy-in into film photography. Even with this past Beers and Camera uh, event with ATL Shooters, it was kind of the same reaction. So I made this video in order to reach out to those type of people and help them understand that you can really start with any type of camera, but there are some key differences that you should know. So let's get to it. Okay, to start, it's probably the most simple, simplest camera and probably one of the easiest to find, which is like this little retro point-and-shoot camera. Now this retro point-and-shoot camera has a fixed lens. This one is 22 millimeter lens, which means it's a pancake lens pretty much. It's very wide, but has a very high L-stop and it is, uh, well the ISO is already preset on these. So the ISO on this camera, I believe is 200. And of course, you have the back, little slide, and you'll pop it open, if I can get it open. <laughs> wow. <laughs> the whole video is going to be maybe fidget, <laughs> fidgeting with the back of this thing. But yes, so pop it open, there's the lens, and then you would spool, you would put your cartridge here, feed the leader this way. And these cameras, run you can any I, I got this from urban outfitters it can run you anywhere from like 20 to you know ten dollars somewhere in there 10 to 20 dollars it does have a viewfinder very simple shutter and it's probably one of the easiest ones to get into you don't have to think about it you know that the iso is already set at 200 so all you have to do is find a film with the iso 200 and you'll be shooting at what's known as box speed Box speed pretty much just dictates that the number value on the box of the film that you purchase is the ISO that you will be shooting at, hence box speed. I can get deeper in that on a different video. If you all want me to, just let me know down in the comments and we can get that going. The next one is also a very simple camera, but it's a little bit different. And I actually like this camera. I had a giveaway for this camera a while back and I may do another one, but this is the Ektar half frame camera. And really what it does is that if you, again, this is great for beginners because if you are shooting your first roll of film, it's gonna double the exposure amount that you get because it's only gonna shoot half of the frame each time that you press the shutter. So if you have 24, and that means you get 48, 36, I believe, is 72, so on and so forth. Um, and that actually gives you more chances to get a decent shot. Again, this is a fixed ISO, and I believe, again, the ISO is at 200. Best to get an ISO that's either at 100 or box speed, which is 200, to shoot with. And you can get some really great images. And I'll upload those right now of images that I took with the Ektar half frame camera. Now, before we get into the more of the higher end cameras, 
Understand that whether you use a camera with a fixed lens or one that has a removable lens really doesn't pay that much attention or have that much uh, weight on how your images come out. Because of course in film photography you need to understand your composition, you need to understand how the ISO or slash ASA values work and Sony 16. Um, I will link King Jake's video about Sony 16. He does a great uh, way of explaining how Sony 16 works and how to value a meter for that. And of course, you will use a light meter if your camera doesn't have a working light meter to help you find the right exposure for your image. Now, this is a, I forget the name for it, <laughs> but this is a Yashica Linux 5000 and of course this one is broken but it is a manual camera or analog camera and you pull this latch there's a latch here you'll pull out the back will pop open this has a fixed lens to it and it has all your f-stop shutter speed ASA slash ISO value on the lens for you to dial in what you need and it will allow you to really get more control over the type of shots that you take. <laughs> yeah, see, we were stuck. So, that's the Yashica Linux 5000. Next in line is also a, another analog camera, but this one is probably a little bit favor, favorable to me. This is the Nikromat FT2, um, and this is just a beautiful camera, all black. I'm not going to get into too much detail, but the lens on this, I believe, is removable, and you can then change, you have the option of changing lenses for this camera. Again, you get all your values on the camera, your f-stop, your ISO, your shutter speed, and you really get to dial that in and really dial in what you are looking for in your image and based on the values that you need and the way that your image reads out on the light meter, whether you have use the light meter on your phone or the light meter with the camera, you can really dial that in and get what you need out of it. The next camera is a SLR, it's a film SLR camera. This is one of my favorite cameras and my dad shot with this camera. And it's from Canon, this is the Canon 650D. Now the Canon 650D of course comes with a film reader, digital film reader. It does take batteries um, and then you can go full auto allowing the camera to of course determine the values for you, thus hopefully getting the right exposure that you need and show speed that you need for the image that you're trying to capture, or you can go manual. And then you can even do depth of field with this camera. There are a lot of different tricks you can do with this type of camera, but it allows you more control than the previous cameras that I showed you. And this is something that you can attach different lenses to it, different glasses to it, and really get into detail with your shot when it comes to this S film SLR camera. And before we get into the last camera that I have here, I want to say that one, film photography is very rewarding. I think for me, um, and <laughs> that's my laundry if you hear it, um, for me, the film, S film in general has taught me to slow down, has really given me the ability to think more about the shot that I'm making and really just think about how I'm composing my shots. I think that a lot of times when shooting digital that you can get used to just firing off, firing off, and you don't have to really think about the shot because if you're shooting on continuous, you're bound to capture the image that you're going for because of the way the digital cameras are set up. In film, you have to really pay attention. You have to really think and really compose your shots well 
in order to get the desired image. And I think that that's what scares a lot of people away from film photography. Of course, the cost of some of the film stocks uh, can also deter people and development costs. But I believe that you get really rewarding images and a really rewarding feeling from shooting film that you can't really get from digital. A lot of digital shots may be seen as throwaways, um, whatever shots, just kind of shots to kind of sit on hard drives. As film shots, anytime you revisit film shots, you get a new love for the shot itself, even on, on films that you messed up. It is uh, easy to be deterred by messing up film, but any film photographer will tell you that when shooting film, you have to keep at it. Now, for this last camera, this is considered what would be a professional level film photography camera. It was meant for sports photography and things of that nature, wildlife photography, and it really has more bells and whistles than all the other cameras that I've showed you here. And this is my Nikon F4. The Nikon F4 has a waist level viewfinder. Um, you can set, of course, your ISO slash ASA values, your exposure compensation uh, value, you can go priority mode, aperture mode, um, shoulder priority mode, manual, um, idle, and of course um, you can do continuous single shot, um, depth of field, timer, and you can also really customize the Nikon F4. So it has an MB battery pack on the bottom and you can customize the waist level viewfinder on here to really get deep into making it work for what you need specifically when it comes to this camera. This is a heavy duty camera. You can of course uh, hit something with this camera and it still work. This camera is really a tank and a workhorse and I was lucky to even find it. So shout out to the my guys over at Wings, they sold me, sold me a lot of my gear and I really can't thank them enough for yes, working with me to putting this in my hand. I've thought about selling this camera a lot uh, in recent months uh, due to life changes, but I just can't seem to let go of it. I can't seem to bring myself to do that. So. I enjoy it, um, and this is on the higher end of cameras. Now, of course, everybody knows that you have cameras like Leica that cost a thousand dollars. You have um, your Hasselblads, you have your um, Mias, your um, Bronicas, the you know, medium format cameras, and your uh, Contax T2s, and cameras like that do get more expensive. But you can really create an image that you'll love, whether it's with the Ektar half frame camera, with the Canon 650D, with the Nikon FT2, the Nikon F4, any camera really that you can get your hands on. You, you get your hands on, load in a roll of film. There are great people around Atlanta, great people around your city that don't mind showing you how to load film properly, who to take it to, Please, when you get your first roll, please don't go to Walgreens or CVS to get it developed. They will ruin your film. Please, please go to a camera shop. There are great camera shops here in Atlanta, Wings, Camera and Digital. Uh, you have the Photo Spot out in Douglasville. You have Wolf Photo Bar off where you could road. Uh, you have Bellows and Little Five Points. There are so many great shops in Atlanta that you could go to to get your film developed. There are people who know how to handle film, how to develop film, how to scan film in, how to correct it, and get you back shots that you will enjoy. So all you can do is go out, grab your camera, and get to shooting. Hopefully this video is helpful for you. I know it's a short one. I wanted to make this video because I really want to help people who were interested in starting film photography. And I hope that this at least helps you on the start of your journey. If you have any more comments or any questions like that, please leave them down in the comment section. Every view counts, every like counts. I appreciate everybody who views my videos, who watches the content, who comments. You all really mean the most to me. I want to make a community where we can come to each other and help each other out and really expound on art and creativity. So, 
Like always, I will see you all in the next one. Peace.